Yes, it's that time again. It's Wednesday at 8 p.m. and we are the Gun Cranks. <clears throat> I wish I could get a little lower. The Gun Cranks. Dun, I'm, dun, dun. I'm feeling cranky. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to get to that. Shut up, Brent. No, <laughs> yeah. no. I'm Brent Wien. I'm the editor of Guns Magazine. That's Tom McHale, editor of American Handgunner, who's interrupting, and our former boss, the retired Roy Huntington. Yeah, I'm nobody now. <laughs> hey, nobody. How's it going? Yeah, good. Yeah. Are you even there? yeah barely yeah <laughs> well anyway i've got a long monologue i want to give tonight about oh god <laughs> all right was, we must that was your outside voice tom yeah <laughs> i'm gonna interrupt there tom <laughs> that was that was a cue to interrupt oh okay oh oh my cue <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know what i've been thinking is there are there ways we could make this better no because it's no. perfect now mm. Yeah, you know Any what? Ideas? I think we can, and mm. that's what we're going to start off. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. No, we we have this kind of started as a lark, as a uh, uh, you know pandemic kind of thing. We all got together on uh, a video chat service, and we thought, hey, this is kind of fun. This thing has grown like crazy, so we're going to make some changes. We're going to try to make it even cooler and even better. The only change that's going to affect some folks is we're not going to be doing it Wednesday night at 8 p.m. anymore. We're going to do it now. Uh, it's going to go uh, up and be recorded. Uh, it, we, it will go live on YouTube on, what, 3 p.m. Uh, on Thursday, Eastern time. 3 p.m. Thursday, Eastern on YouTube. And yes. there'll be more stuff. There'll be more content. We hope it'll be even better. So we'll probably have to get some new hosts to make it better. But that's going to work out better for everybody. That in the budget? That is... Yeah. Uh, there'll, there'll be dancing uh, uh, pretty girls <laughs> on those shiny poles, you know, where that they dance from. She we'll be doing that. Now. Beep, beep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a lot of fun stuff. I hey, probably. speaking of censorship, uh, oh. that also means we also will be appearing on rumble.com. And what a the segue. Uncensored video network. <laughs> what a perfect segue. And that goes right into what we're going to talk tonight. Let me do it. Ready? I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Was that you know what I hate? Oh, that should be a movie. <laughs> you, you know what I hate? What do you hate? I hate tech tyrants. Tech tyrants. I do. I do. I do. They're out of control now, man. They are. Ex out explain that. Tell us what that is. Yes. A tech tyrant is a company like, I'm trying to think if there are any examples, um, <laughs> uh, you know, like a, a company that dominates support. the world of social media and is really kind of a monopoly in a sense. Um, do we, are um, there, any, um, I'm racking my brain uh, to come up with the names of these things. Yeah, there's yeah, you face, oh, Facebook. YouTube. Oh, uh, to, yeah, it's YouTube. I know what you mean though, yeah. Google Duck, And Twibbler. Twibbler, yeah, something twi like Twibbler, that. Twibbler, yeah. Yeah. Insta mom, I think so they're yeah. the ones that they have all the answers. Yes, if you're and part. they want to impose their will on the rest of us through and censorship and correct what's it called? What was it right think or what was it 1984 <laughs> or something like <laughs> Yeah, I think I remember that. Think? Yeah, yep, yep. I'm drawing a blank. There's there was a word something think that it's all the same group think you know yeah. brain think left wingy think i don't know but that's why we're here and that's what we're going to talk about tonight if you have followed any uh social media or anything like that in the gun industry we're starting to hear from our friends and partners and even competitors that we're getting kicked in the crotch literally since the election uh we've yeah. seen it our our numbers are going down through no changes on our end uh, our uh, uh we're getting notices of terms of service violations for stuff that is as far less innocuous mm -hmm. than any mainstream cnn type of thing and we're mad as hell but it's not are we going to take it we're not going to take it because <laughs> tom McHale's been working hard on the alternative media and we're going to talk about where we're, well you've already mentioned rumble but let's let's back up and talk about the problem you guys have been hearing and seeing the same stuff from our friends in the industry that Oh my lord! If you put, if you hold a gun up in a YouTube video now, bingo bango, you know you're demonetized. You're, you might even be shut off. And some companies have been shut off too. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, you know who got shut off from Facebook recently? The ISSF. That's the International wow. Shooting Sports Foundation. Their Facebook page got turned off. I mean, 
this is these are not rogue cowboys these are this is the international body you know all the countries that hate guns it's it's all those people that run basically the olympics and world cup competitions for things like air gunning and 22 target and air guns shooting. what about the children oh my gosh i mean they are the most benign organization i love them they're great that yeah. you know they do what they do but they are so benign and they got turned off now eventually after the uproar because i think they have like six million members or something mm -hmm. yeah uh, facebook was gracious and kind and benevolent enough <laughs> a benevolent tyrant they are to turn them back on but i mean come on and i think in those situations those companies don't do it because it's the right thing they do they do it because they stop and they say what will hurt us more right keeping it turned off or turning it back on Yep. Right. And that's how they make that decision. And because what's right has nothing to do with it. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, uh, a friend of mine who has a YouTube channel who does uh, it's kind of engineering, machining and things like that. Uh, he made a gun part. And then out of curiosity, he actually installed it. He did it for a friend. And then so he his friend came over and they put the part in the gun and then they went outside and they shot the gun. And his he was hit by YouTube for it. No kidding. Really? Yes. Uh, and so now he, he was able to, I guess, get back on somehow. Uh, but he just said, he said, you know what? I make my living with this. I can't afford to go here again. Yeah, because, of course, like it usually happens with gun stuff, everybody loved it. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. everybody went, wow, that was really interesting to see. Would you do more? You know, and he just went. And, no. and censorship worked because he will never yeah. have gun stuff on yeah. his channel. He will never have a gun. And it was it was like an old, old Western gun, you know, single yeah. shot falling block thing or something. It was ridiculous. So but they have you already, noticed how much bolder they've gotten in the past few weeks? Straight up bold. Straight up. Um, amazing. <laughs> oh, I thought you had a further point. <laughs> oh no, yeah. I mean, I mean it's 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 just insane what we're seeing. I mean, okay, let's Okay, let's go there. So we have a sitting president who gets every tweet or post gets fact checked and and or censored. Mm -hmm. Love him or hate him is irrelevant, right? What's relevant is we have a duly elected president who some tech weenies are censoring and fact checking. And the, the scary thing, it's not, they're not fact checking facts. They're fact checking opinions. Yeah. That's the really scary thing. That's a very good point. And yeah. bringing it back full circle to us, which was it a week ago or two weeks ago that we got the little box beneath us because we were talking about the election and it was saying Joe Biden has been oh, yeah. not named the president elect, blah, blah, blah. And it didn't say anything that we were wrong. It just, I thought it was awfully curious that they put that little box beneath us. And I know, on gun cranks, on a talk show. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Somebody then, in an office somewhere had to decide these people are subversive. Well, I kind of actually, I, in fairness, I found that kind of helpful that they <laughs> included those messages for us because, I mean, if you stop and think about it, how else would we know what to think? This is true. If it wasn't for that. I mean, right? you just summed it right up. Right. You know, and I think a lot of people just don't think that. My daughter, bless her heart, is a 31 year old millennial who believes everything she reads on the internet. Mm. And it's not uncommon for her to come to me, you know, very upset and, you know, and demanding and wants to talk about some policeman who did something on some third string YouTube video that someone told her about one time. And, uh, and I, I always say, well, Madison, you have to, you know, check it three or four different ways before you make any kind of decision. And even then you don't have to. And, but that's it. You know, that's the society out there today. And I, I think we older people struggle with that because what like that that picture I saw was an old guy like 80 years old, he's holding an M1 grand and he said, going to prison doesn't worry me now like it used to. And <laughs> I think as I've gotten older, uh, I'm 66 now, is I look at these things that happen around me and opinions and the hysteria and all that. And it uh, it's very easy to say no, and it's very easy to not believe it, and it's very easy to push back. But I think too, too many people are uncomfortable to just say no. Huh? Yeah. Well, I, I saw a great thing on the Babylon Bee the other day, and if you don't check that out, and that's an unsolicited plug. They They're are brilliant. They are brilliant, 
And it, that's what I get my daily chuckle from because you can't find, you know, humor is not funny anymore either because we're, we can't make fun of anybody. Well, the Babylon Bee is very funny and they had a, uh, they're a satire site, a Christian satire site. And they had a story about UCLA was announcing they're building a wall around the entire uh, campus. So it would be an echo chamber. So <laughs> that only approved thoughts and worldviews would be allowed in. And, and there was a lot of funny quotes about, you know, <laughs> you know, you're not sending, you know, you're not paying a hundred thousand dollars a semester to send your children away to listen to different viewpoints. They've got to be indoctrinated exactly. what they already believe. And I thought, wow. Or how to think. Yeah, exactly. And it would be funny if it wasn't absolutely true, but I guess that's another topic for another day, right? But well, yeah. I, I saw a good uh, a little poster the other day and it was, it said, you know, 1984 in the book. And then underneath it said, note, this was not intended to be <laughs> a plan, yeah. you know, for society. <laughs> wow. it, it, it's crazy and again we've talked to so many folks the other insidious thing is our our digital stuff how, how do most folks find it they find it one of two ways either they go to say gunsmagazine.com or americanhandgunner.com i gotta throw that in there or they google something right i mean there's other search engines but google's the nine billion pound gorilla in that space yeah so those things are powered by what they call algorithms well, that's just a bunch of computer code that says, if you ask for this, it'll send you this. Well, you can change that so that certain things might not appear as frequently. And you cannot tell me, I will argue all day long with my limited little pea brain that they've not made, that they have made changes since the election, because you look at traffic numbers, they're static or going down. And another thing, we were talking about followers. Our followers have been static for a while. So how is that when our audience has increased tremendously in the last couple of years, but yet we still don't have people following us? Something doesn't seem right there. So I have a, um, a challenge for all our viewers. This all sounds very conspiratorial that Google is monkeying around with search results and stuff, but I can prove it right now. And I'm being dead serious for a change. Any t next time a controversial issue comes up, Open four tabs in your browser, put one on google.com, one on Yahoo, one on Bing, and another on DuckDuckGo, and type in the exact same few words to each of those windows at the exact same time. Like the other day, I started typing in um, Hunter Biden, and <laughs> I took screenshots, and I'm, I'm being dead serious. Google was Hunter Biden Foundation, Hunter Biden feeds starving children, Hunter Biden, blah, 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 all the little previews. That pop answer. Up. Yeah. All three of the others, Bing, Yahoo, and DuckDuckGo, we're talking about conspiracy and Burisma and China and all of these things that are hot items in the news, whether they're, I don't, you know, whatever, they are what they are. But do that yourself. Next time something's hot in the news and you will see, you will absolutely see exactly what is going on. I mean, there's no, there's no maybe about this. Yeah. And they've but, simply gotten emboldened since the election. I mean, it so looked I like- I turned off Google on all my devices. I either use Yahoo, Bing, or DuckDuckGo on my phone and computer just because yeah. I'm more confident that I'm getting, you know, unfiltered response results from searches. Well, you know, it's funny you should say that because I, that's ex pretty much exactly what I did with my daughter. She was complaining about something. And so she showed me her Google search on her phone. And I said, well, type in DuckDuckGo and run that same exact thing. Yep. And it was exactly what you said. Suddenly there was, oh, police video release showing yeah. that they were right to do what they did, you know, and wow. commentary from in all, you know, basically a much more balanced look at things. Yeah. Take and, uh, tech costs you 30 seconds to do it and you will see, you know, it, it's, it, it's shocking. Amazing what what i find too is the personal attention that we're suddenly getting um you know most of the stuff on the internet is automatic through these algorithms and and artificial intelligence but suddenly we're getting these things that uh, well like our programs have been flagged for uh, questionable content how did that happen i i know there are ways automatically but i, I can't help but thinking there are people that whether it's within say Google or just folks in the internet saying these people are bad because they're talking about guns and freedom and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we're getting these messages that you've been demonetized. You've been penalized in search engines. And if you want to, you know, argue that you can contact, you know, this uh, email address and of course mm -hmm. waste about 
you know, six years of your life and end up with the same result. So it, it, it is amazing that I think what we're going back to is we all say this, we're not conspiratorial type people, but damn it, there is a flat out conspiracy going on right now. And yeah. Tom McHale especially can prove it. Well, I know. I mean, I worked in that environment for 20 years. I worked for West Coast high tech companies, Microsoft and startups, and they really genuinely do believe that they are smarter than you and that they have a responsibility to the world. I'm not kidding at no, all. That's why I left. I mean, that they are have a not not a desire, but a responsibility to the world uh, to help people make better decisions and do what's better for them. They yeah. really do believe that it's, it's frightening. Well, it's like we talked about last week that, you know, the politicians are lying to us about gun control. It's because part of that, the way they can do that with a straight face is because we're horrible, terrible, rotten people in their value system. Mm -hmm. You know, there used to be civil discourse. I disagree with you and might even come to blows, but at mm -hmm. least, you know, whatever. Now it is a whole matter of, you are a horrible human being. So anything I say or even do is okay because I'm justified because I've got moral high ground here. And yeah. it's, it's amazing. Plus they lie because they don't know what the truth is. I lie too. And, you know, even when you confront them with the truth, it's completely disavowed. You know, it's a bit like a religious zealot who wants to convert you, even if you don't want to be converted and they're doing it for your own benefit. Mm -hmm. You know, and if, so if you say it's okay, I understand really it's okay. I'll take the, you know, I'll take the hit. All right. You know, I'm really okay. And then in spite of that, they still insist on moving forward with their agenda. And it's really a close uh, parallel to that in the sense that these anti-gun, gun grabber, uh, Microsoft people, like you were saying, Tom, who think better about things than we do are insistent on saving us from ourselves when, yeah. when hello out there. Hello. I don't want saved by you, please. No, you know, you definitely do not. <laughs> yeah, we're perfectly fine. Now, what are we doing about it? Yes, what are we doing about it? Well, Trump. Have you seen? Have you guys seen? You know, have you heard of Candace Owens? She's kind of a conservative. A, what do you call it? Opinion commentator type. You know, um, she actually got fed up with all this and sued. Sued basically sued Facebook through their fact checker organization. So so far, the first one was PolitiFact, who's a uh, on the Facebook fact checker roster, right? And then USA Today is also in there. She won the first lawsuit because basically she did a tweet or something about Joe Biden not being president elect, and it's factually correct. He's not until all the states certify, right? Then he is. Um, and they basically fact checked her and took it down and changed it and all this stuff. And she said, okay. And she started raising money and wow. sued them and won and they had to retract it. Now that that's not going to solve the problem. I don't think that, but that's a nice step in the right direction, like accountability. You know? Well, there is no accountability for them. They're a monopoly, you yeah. know, except there are people making in people and companies making inroads. And we, like many of our, uh, shall we say conservative friends and many folks in the shooting industry, we're saying to hell with your social media, we'll go to someplace where at least we're accepted, if not loved, you know? And uh, yeah. I know uh, we've, I'll let Tom explain some of the th places we're going, but I've personally gone to uh, uh, parlor and even one of my family members was horrified. Cause I, you know, there's terrible people and things there. <laughs> and, you know, I, I said, I've been there now. And the only terrible people that are there are liberals coming in to tell us what terrible people we are. It's pretty much been, people of my political bent and we yeah it's an echo chamber but you're telling me facebook isn't or whatever but cnn isn't it's, it won't stay an echo chamber for long no and great yeah I'll, i don't ask for much all i ask for is the ability to talk yeah and debate and discuss and without some third party i mean they're all they're all these companies are operating under this shield of the section 230 of the what was it the communications decency right. act yeah you know, basically saying, you know, they can do moderate and reasonable, you know, editorial oversight and blah, blah, blah. And that's, that's BS. That's got to, that's got to end, you know. That moderate and reasonable is the yeah, scary they're, part. They're publishers. They're not platforms anymore. They are yeah. editorial publishers, just like a newspaper, you know. So, so, so Tom, you've led the charge on this. What have we done to, to uh, yeah. stake our 
our stick in the ground and draw a line in the sand. Well, I would preface it by saying lawsuits are nice and all that, and the, the Candace Owens things is entertaining, and it, it'll make a difference, but it's not going to solve the problem. What I'm a free market guy, you know, that what's going to solve the problem is somebody else kicking their butt, you know, the next wave of mm -hmm. companies that say, hey, we're, we're going to let you talk. You know, our business is providing the, the telephone wire between you, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we've, we've moved, um, you know, I've gone to parlor. I still, you know, engage in Twitter, but I'm not at all careful about it. If they kick me off, they kick me off, you know, but, uh, we're, we're going out where we can speak freely. Uh, we've gone to MeWe, M-E-W-E.com. Uh, you'll find an American handgunner page there. Now, what's interesting, Brent, a few minutes ago, you said um, uh, that followers weren't growing on some of the established platforms. Uh, followers are growing like crazy on these new ones. So there is your proof that there's no metering going on. Yeah. You know? Well, one uh, popular commentator I follow, they did some what they call A-B tests, where basically you set up two different conditions and you see which one works better. And mm -hmm. they posted like 10 different things on Twitter and 10 different things on Parler. And the numbers on Parler were stunning. And Parler has a fraction of the audience that Twitter does. Mm -hmm. So if that's not a, a straight up example of how you know, pro-gun, uh, right-wing, conservative, Republican, whatever you want to call it, is being throttled. I mean, that's that's an A-B test right there. And to see their numbers, and I, I can't remember, they were like triple or quadruple what Twitter was. And again, uh, Parler has still just a fraction of the people. You know, Facebook has billions. Parler's got 10, uh, 10 million or 12 million now. So there's there's some dirty pool going on without a doubt. And you're right. The engagement is better, with, even with smaller numbers. I mean, mine's my parlor account is uh, we're st we haven't launched the American Handgunner parlor account. We're going to shortly. So the only one handgunner related right now is my mine, just Tom McHale. You know, uh, join me there. We'll talk, right? Um, but uh, we'll be launching American Handgunner on parlor post haste. Right. What about I think it's Im important about, uh, though. We we tell people that we're also keeping our presence on right. the other platforms, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, we'll use them. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, For uh, our it'll, benefit. <laughs> it'll be a good. It'll be a good chance, though, to to do just what you were talking about, which is post the same content on both and yeah. and see what happens. You know. Yep. So and uh, check, talk about I, Rumble a little bit because we're on YouTube right now, but there will come a day where. They're going to go, no, no, you guys are rotten. Hey, I have a question, Brent. Yes. Suppose, in theory, suppose I wanted to go to Rumble and see Guns Magazine videos. What, what, where would I go? Is it just it's Guns Magazine, right? I, I, yeah, yeah. That, I was waiting for the trick hey. question there. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't. I was, I, was, yeah. I was like handing you on a silver platter, oh, okay. a free plug okay. opportunity. Now, you could return the favor if you like. And where is the American handgunner stuff? Uh, American handgunner. There we go. All together. Oddly enough. <laughs> on Rumble. Yeah. We're, hey, we're, folks, we're uh, busily migrating our entire library. Oh my gosh, our producer is going to kill us for this. <laughs> I was waiting for that. He's absolutely buried. Hundreds How many videos hundreds. do you think we have? Like oh, a thousand? And on, a yeah. thousand. Maybe. Well, I don't even know. Yeah. Okay. So we're begging forgiveness from Sherry, our producer. <laughs> Sorry. But but she's busily moving um, all our relevant stuff to uh, Rumble Guns Magazine and Rumble American Handgunner. So yep. it's going to be fun to watch what happens with the numbers. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. I mean, we have some videos on on youtube that have a million views you know yeah. eight hundred thousand million views but they've been up for a few years but so it'll be interesting if as they translate to the other platforms how fast those views build i know i'll certainly be watching it closely because i'm i'm really interested i would love to win this you know and it's mm -hmm. not so much that uh you know we're kicking these other people in the butt is we're making them not uh pertinent anymore right you know I mean, I think if you're a hentai cartoon, fluffy puppy cat video lover, I guess you're safe to stay on YouTube forever. Yep. You know, yep. uh, I know I'm always disappointed when I log into YouTube to basically to go to our channel, but initially they throw that feed up at you, yep. you know, what's trending and what's that 
it's there is no hope for society. I just <laughs> just so you know. I mean, I I looked at the top trending videos and it's like, really, people, is this really the best you can do? You yeah. know, it's like if you go to the app store to search for an app and it says trending searches and it's all mindless video game jumping kitties you know and <laughs> except parlor app uh what two weeks ago was number one and the mainstream media lost their freaking mind oh yeah and that's where <laughs> my family member got into it was well there, there's all kinds of terrible stuff going on over there and i'm you know i said who's your source on that cnn <laughs> yeah, no. they, they can't control the narrative there so they hate it they, so it, strike a blow for a, freedom go to parlor as of a week ago they had added what 10 and a half million yeah in like a couple of weeks and they've had service that, problems that tells you people service. hey americans don't like to be bullied by tech tyrants or anybody else so they're like you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna hold up but i'm gonna let you guys guess which finger the american <laughs> social media public is is uh, offering up to the tech tyrants. Wait, you know okay? what though? You were right okay, though. Right? Is it? But but we we hate to be bullied. It's like yeah. the, I work with you. I work for you. You know. I work around you. I'll defend you. Right to say what you want to say. Yeah. But yeah. Don't don't bully me. All you have to do is look at those you know muzzle loading Kentucky rifles at that bridge in 1770. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean it's like oh, you. We're I, okay. Hey, All we I, did was think, ask you to leave us alone. And yeah, I think yeah. there's an important distinction too. They, people are saying, "Oh, it's a conservative echo chamber." Like now, but I hope it doesn't stay that way. Yeah, yeah. I just hope it's a forum, an unbiased forum. That's it. Hey, join in, any and all. You know. Yeah. May the best ideas win. So exactly. It's a novel. Thought. The octagon. They don't like that though. The social media yeah. octagon. It's the octagon of free speech. We should. We should <laughs> like it. That. That the octagon of free speech. I'm going to use that's our it. new network. We're going to start a social network. <laughs> Free speech octagon. There you go. Yeah, well, you know, I think that's actually a really, that's a good way to civil disobedience a little bit, which yeah. is simply join parlor, you know, even, I mean, join it. You don't even and, have to post. And me, we and rumble. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't even care if you ever look at it again, but join it, give mm -hmm. them some numbers, you know, help them become stronger so they can fight the good fight. You know, yep. and competition always makes the market stronger and better. You know, whenever there's a monopoly, YouTube, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, then the market goes stale and becomes a mono market kind of, you know, and if well, that's more spoken like a capitalist, Roy, and, you know, the lot of then, capitalism is bad. <laughs> Evil capitalism. Them sons of bitches, you know. <laughs> hey, you know what? There's there's another way to to poke your finger in the eye of, of uh, tech tyrants as well. You know what seems I think is making a comeback in a sense is uh, email. Yeah, mm -hmm. been around forever, but email has no middleman. You know, so yeah. hey, it's well, plug look, time, Brent. Well, wait, if, like hypothetically, we're, we're, if I went to gunsmagazine.com/newsletters, then I could subscribe to whichever newsletters I would like to get. That are are they uncensored? They are uncensored, and they are. Oh true. my gosh, that's one awesome. of our hottest properties right now. And yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because that's that's the way across the industry, because obviously we do a lot of work behind the scenes trying to figure out the best way to go. And yeah. five years ago, every, everybody told you newsletters are dead. They're going away. Now they're the new hot thing. And we've been hey. doing it all along and we've got great lists and great responses. And you need to sign if you're not there yet, you need to get get over there. Or better but, yet, you know, rather than but, going to gunsmagazine.com slash newsletters maybe people should instead go to americanhandgunner.com slash newsletters Just throwing that <laughs> out there both yeah <laughs> both well you know what this is you have two things though is that we do we we do the printed industry newsletter you know that we send out yeah. and i can't tell you the number of times that i have talked to people in marketing in the industry who get these newsletters who always tell me oh whenever i get your newsletter i always take the time to read it and now and i've asked them like oh why is that And they say well you know sometimes you know there's just too much going on on the electronic side of things 
this is something I can manage, I can control, I can save it easily, I can read it a little bit, I can put it back, I can save it, I can put it on the bulletin board. I mean, yeah. these people really use these. And then they often will follow up with an email to you or you or me saying, hey, I read your article, you know, your your column in the last newsletter, and I really appreciate it. So I, I love that. And, and we need to remember to remind them about the print side of things, which you guys do. And we need to remind them again, talk about unfiltered, you know, uncensored, un, 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 is just subscribe to the magazines. I mean, mm -hmm. for 20 bucks a year or so, you get it delivered to your door for crying out loud, everybody. <laughs> you know, and, you know, again, that's another thing that the experts have told us, you know, print is dead, print, well, no, it should already yeah. be dead by now, you know, it's been dying for 20 years. So they say, we just had one of our best uh, uh, print recruitment uh, drives. So I predict, just like newsletters, I'm not saying it's ever going to be like the 1960s where having a printing press was like printing money. But having said that, all the naysayers that say print is dead, they're going to be surprised because of this very reason. And I, I didn't foresee this. I really didn't. You know, when our primary mode of communication in our lives now, which is digital, is suddenly being filtered and, and censored. And I'd like to think that there's a lot more folks that are going to say, you know, just bring it to my mailbox every, every month and let me decide. And, and I don't want to depend what I get to see on a 22 year old liberal arts facts checker sitting in the bowels of the Google campus. You know what, that should be, that should be time magazines words of the year that you just said, What's that? let me decide. Like, is that too much to ask? I mean, that's all I over. Let me decide. You know, I can I can decide what's fake and what's real and what's you know. We're all adults, right? Well, I like that, Brent. That's good. <laughs> that's another social media network we're going to do. Let me decide. Let me decide. Well, uh, we've come up with two good phrases here: the octagon of free speech <laughs> and let me decide. <laughs> Maybe we need T-shirts. I like that idea. <laughs> let me decide. Hey, we got to call Nine Line Apparel again and maybe get, yeah. get a new batch of shirts done. <laughs> and and I, I meant to tell all you guys, I was driving down the street the other day and I saw a guy wearing a defund the media shirt. Nice. Is that yeah. cool? I almost stopped in the middle of traffic. I'm like, brother. <laughs> you know, hey, my, was, wife, my wife Susie wears hers all the time in town shopping and stuff. And she yeah. she tells she comes me home all the time and says, Yeah, you know, somebody said, Hey, why wow, I love that shirt. Where'd you get her? She'll get a tap, tap, tap on her back, and somebody will say, Wow, man, that's a cool shirt. Where'd you get that? Yeah. Hey, I had a nice surprise yesterday. I was in uh, Florida for Thanksgiving and we were driving back yesterday. And um, we said, Hey, let's stop. There's a black rifle coffee like factory store, yeah. you know, right off 95 up near Savannah. We said, Oh, let's stop, you know, check it out, get a cup of coffee. And uh, I pull in and they share a building with Nine Line Apparel. Ah. I had no idea that's where they were. And right. so we had a night, we had a good old time uh, uh, shopping at the Nine Line Apparel factory store. So very cool. Very cool. Got that's some cool. good gifts. You know, let's talk about the print magazine for one more minute or so, because I noticed I, 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 we think about it a lot. Uh, we brought about we brought up something before the show started, our DIY gunsmithing book, which is available on Amazon uh, as a print on demand book, has spiked. I mean, the numbers are huge for it. And so, you know, the, don't tell me print's dead, because if people are, are paying to have the, it printed and mm -hmm. sent to them, you know, and... I like to do woodworking. And so I get uh, four or five woodworking magazines. And what I do when I'm finished reading each one is that I tear out the articles that I think, well, that's a good project or that's a good technique or that's an interesting, you know, article about finishing or something like that. And I staple them together. And in my shop, I have a file folder, which I know a lot of people say, well, you're a FUD. That's why you have this <laughs> kind of stuff. But and it's and it's labeled as you know drawer making and cabinet making and finishing and and table saws and stuff like that and that's how I file the stuff. But see, here's the deal though: if all of that was on some digital thing on my phone, I a, would forget it's there, and I would never be able to find it if I needed it. And this way, if you're in the shop and I go, you know, I'm going to build a drawer. And I go there and I pull out the drawer things and I look through them and I go, oh, I like that one. And so I bring that over to my saw and I use it. And I can't, you can't do that with your phone. I mean, I suppose you could if you really wanted to, but it sure doesn't work for me. It's hard to blow the sawdust off of it. 
it's hard to blow. And we hear from readers all the time saying, you know, I remember reading that in your magazine and I went back in my collection and I found that issue and I got that load that Taffin wrote about, yeah. you know? And so I think that the modern people or so many of the younger people, it's disposable information. In other words, they, they get it, they look at it, they delete it or they go on to the next thing and it's gone forever now, you know, never to return in their brain until the next, you know, what viral YouTube video appears and then that's there and then it's gone. Yeah. But I, I think that, I think we, it should have longer legs than that and they can get that. So subscribe to the print magazine, damn it. You know? Well said. Harumph. Yeah. Harumph. Well, well, we, looking at the clock, we've been rattling on for quite a while and it's been great, but let's wrap this thing up with a nice, pretty bow. Since it's the Christmas season, Tom, would you run down our list one more time of our various social media platforms? Okay. Yeah. Uh, search for us on MeWe, MeWe. Uh, American Handgunner. I think, uh, I think Guns Magazine is coming soon there. I think American so. Cop is already there. So give a search for American Cop on MeWe.com. Uh, Rumble, American Handgunner, all together, and Guns Magazine, all together. Uh, we've got, I don't know, probably 20 or so videos on each each page right now, but they are going up daily. So you're going to have our whole library before too long. Um, and then also keep an eye on Parlor. So Parlor, you can find me, Tom McHale, Brent. I don't know if you have a an official or if it's a personal or what. I don't want to put you on the spot, but we will have American Handgunner and Guns post haste. So I had to laugh if we'd been planning this out better when you said American Handgunner all together. We will all said American Handgunner. <laughs> I've been watching nice. Blazing Saddles lately. Okay, yeah, but, one, two, three. Let's, yeah. And and don't forget the uh, email newsletters. Email Gunsmagazine.com slash newsletters and AmericanHandgunner.com slash newsletter. Also, so, you know, for those email newsletter blasts, people need to know that a lot of times there's there's cool ads that ride along with them. And mm -hmm. you there's, there's always interesting articles. And uh, sometimes people give things away and stuff like that. So... And it's a good reminder to sign up for the gun of the month for all the mm -hmm. magazines. And so, I mean, it's just, it's free fun that you get in your email basket. So yep. and, and uncensored, one point, uncensored. Yeah. One point uncensored. I do want to make is all these new uh, social media platforms understand they, and we are a work in progress on those. So uh, I noticed parlor is probably, well, it's not as feature rich as YouTube or Twitter or whatever and we're trying to get content up there but like it was either roy or tom said you know we've got thousands of videos we're trying to get those up as fast as we can and we're not a huge company so bear with us we're we're yeah. getting there but uh you know we we certainly want to hear from you that's why we're doing it social media is supposed to be social so let us know what you're thinking we certainly let you know what we're thinking so and we're thinking that guys i think it's time's up so migrate with us migrate with us and join yeah. the great resistance we are <laughs> resisting the tech tyrants as, as tom said so w when can folks now this one is 8 p.m wednesday but next week our next version of gun cranks gun cranks tv yep is is well, when is it tom next week thursday 3 p.m eastern will thursday. be posted to youtube and rumble exactly so, and that's gun three cranks different viewing TV. opportunities Yep, exactly. Um, and they'll be there forever. So. so hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving and is going to have a good quarantine <laughs> Christmas season. <laughs> Who knows what life is going to hold, but it will always hold the gun cranks. We will be here next week, Thursday, uh -huh. first at 3 p.m. on YouTube and Rumble and all that good stuff. So we hope you check us out and, and you'll move there with us. So on behalf of Mr. Tom McHale, editor of American Handgunner, and Mr. Roy Huntington, our retired publisher and predecessor and kind of the guy that caused all this, <laughs> I am <laughs> Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. We will see you next Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Have a good one, folks.